All right, you guys, thank you for joining me for part two of the uniform residential appraisal report process and what an appraiser, uh, part of their process as from everywhere from being licensed as an appraiser to all the information and data that they have to uh, collect, gather and analyze in order to make an effective and um, you know effective uh, appraisal report. So each appraiser must also include the following requirements, uh, required exhibits. They must include a street map showing the location of the subject property um, and all the comparable used in the valuation process, um, an exterior building sketch of the improvement. So uh, in your appraisal report, um, the appraiser will have in there also a sketch of the property and the structure showing the dimensions. Um, this must also include the appraisal's calculations for determining the gross living um, gross living area estimate. If the floor plan is an atypical or functional obsolete, then a floor plan sketch showing the dimensions is required instead of the exterior sketch. Clear descriptive photo photographs um, showing the subject properties front and back, side views, um, the front back. I used to do this with BPOs. And um, this is all part, then that's a broker price opinion, if you don't know. But um, the appraiser must include also the front view, the back view, the uh, street view, and all um, appropriate ways to identify. In fact, a great appraiser will even include the um, street sign address showing the name of the street, as well as the maybe the mailbox number uh, or the number on the house. So it must be a clear description um, showing all the front of all the comparables that was used as part of the process. Um, other data that's necessary to provide an opinion of market value that adequately supports their finding on the appraisal. The data must include an attachment or an addendum to the, to the appraiser's um, form. So remember that an addendum is um, an, in an addition and an amendment is making a change to a contract. So that's very important. So um, just for the purpose of helping you um, be more familiar, I've put together a few questions. So you'll become familiar with the data required for each section of this form as you walk through this course um, or this, this uh, training. So let's review the purpose of this form. What's the purpose of the Uniform Residential Appraisal uh, Report? So um, is it to gather details about the property for listing it? Is it to provide the lender with accurate opinion of the property's market value? Is it to gather detail about a buyer's income and finances for the loan approval process? Or is it to note property conditions needing attention to repairs? Well, I'm going to say it's gonna be B, to provide the lender no, 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 guys. It's going to be C, to gather detail about, no, no, no. It's going to be to gather detail about the property for listing. Mm -mm -mm. D, to note property conditions needing, mm -mm -mm. so it's, it's B, to provide the lender with accurate opinion of property market value. So the appraisal report is ordered for the lender so that he knows the value of the property and that way you also can determine if you have equity built up in your property. Um, a loan is not complete without an appraisal. So um, this you, generally a government backed loan is not complete without an appraisal. So <clears throat> there are other parts about the neighborhood that an appraiser has to gather as far as uh, neighborhood data there are many sizes, types of communities in the U.S. Uh, from new new to mixed-use development to planned unit development, that's called a PUD, um, planned unit development to golf course amenities or communities to row houses. Um, the appraiser usually describes a neighborhood as a separate area with common amenities and harmony of land use. So neighborhoods are sometimes defined by natural boundaries, such as a river or lake, but most often by man-made boundaries, such as a highway, a park, or city limits, where subjects in this, um, when subject is in a small town. So 
The appraiser must also include the report whether property values in the subject neighborhood are increasing, they're stable, or they're declining. As one would expect, maximum financing is more preferable when property values are either stable or increasing. So it's very important to know. So uh, generally, the criteria for making the decision lies in the four stages of the neighborhood. So the four stages of a neighborhood are the, um, the growth, the uh, rejuvenation, the decline, and also the equilibrium, which is the, or stability of a neighborhood. So the growth is the neighborhood, uh, it's the neighborhood's characteristics by the market um, acceptance. The equilibrium is a period with no market change. So that's where it's kind of stabilized. Um, the rejuvenation of an area, um, that's the neighborhood's renewal and increased demand. So then we have the decline and that's a time of lower, um, lower demand. So and all of this is, is so important again for the appraisal process. So neighborhood data section of the um, UARA, which is the Uniform Residential Appraisal Report. Um, this is all part of that section. So let's look at the neighborhood data section of the UARA where appraisal reports and support their analysts of the subject property neighborhoods. The section consists of some check boxes and a few lines for a narrative explanation. Appraisers can continue a more detailed neighborhood analyst and expl ex explanatory comments page. So there'll be certain pages that um, will be part of the appraisal. And those are the pages that you as an agent will need to be able to identify so you, you will know where to um, gather the information um, to discuss with your client should they share the appraisal with you. Now, often I've seen agents want to share the appraisal with the, um, with the other client, but remember the appraisal belongs to the buyer. It does not belong to you. It belongs to the buyer. And uh, it's really important that you understand that if whatever that value is, that is to be held close to you, that's not to be shared with the other side under any circumstances. If they want to share it, let them share it. But you as the agent never need to share the appraised value with really anyone. Allow the client to do that if they choose to do so. In the situation where an appraisal comes back and there are repairs, at that time, you as an agent, you can take the summary section of where um, the repairs are being suggested by the or requested by the um, appraiser, but you do not need to send that entire report over to the other party. I repeat, do not send that entire report. The only thing that you should include in a repair replace proposal should be the summary of what needs to um, what repairs need to be made. You do not need to include the entire appraisal report. And only if and when repairs are required do you need to share um, that information. When we're talking in terms of value, only if the appraisal does not meet the sales price would you share that information with the other party. And again, I oftentimes would let the client or let the lender share that information. So, um, you know, that's that's something very important that you understand that's confidential information is that appraisal report. Again, um, we're going to make a third video because this is a deep subject when we're talking about understanding the appraisal process and um, all of that for the appraiser. So we're going to do a follow-up video and complete this discussion of the uniform appraisal, uh, uniform, <laughs> the Uniform Residential Appraisal Report process. So with that, I will see you at Broker for You, round three, talking about appraisals and understanding appraisal process for appraisers.